Hi, welcome. This is the A4 worksheet video. Hi. Hello. Oh, cool. Active crowd today. All right, uh, let's get started. We have our octagon with center at X, radius of 5. Uh, find each measure, so we'll go ahead and get through these. Uh, first thing is I'm going to find the central angle, which is going to be 360 divided by 8. And, uh, oh, it's frozen. Not for, not for all the viewers at home. There we go. Now the viewers in class can see it. Tell me if you can see it. Ready? One, two, three. I can see it. Oh my gosh, I just healed all the blind. It's awesome. All right, anyways, let's continue. Um, so we're going to use 360 divided by 8. Uh, that's going to give me my central angle uh, of 45. Now if you look at F, X, E, that actually is the central angle right there. And then Y, X, E is going to be half of that central angle. So if we divide that by 2, we're going to get... Uh, 22.5. So I'm going to draw my little triangle out just like that. I'm going to get 22.5 up here. My apothem is right here, my half side is here, and my uh, 5 is my radius right there. Okay. So that's me to find xy, that's going to be my apothem. Uh, so I'm going to, have to use trig to figure out what my apothem is. So I'm going to use my eyes up here. I'm going to use adjacent and hypotenuse, so that's going to be Cosine of 22.5 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to get 5 times the cosine of 22.5 gives me my apothem. And we'll plug that in, 5 times cosine of 22.5. That gives me about 4.6. It does say round to the nearest tenth, so I'm just going to go 4.6 for my apothem. Next it asks me to find Fe, which is the total side length. Um, so I'm going to have to use, again, Sokotoa. Uh, to solve for this, I'm going to switch colors here, and I'm going to do the work right up here. This time I'm going after the half side, so I'm going to go opposite over hypotenuse. That's going to be sine 22.5 equals opposite. I'm just going to call it x over uh, 5. Multiply the 5 out, 5 times sine of 22.5. Okay, that's a little hard to see, I notice. Let me zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. There we go, so 5 times... 5 times the sine of 22, not twice, 22.5. Uh, that's going to give me 1.91. Remember, that's only half a side length. So 1.91. Uh, so to get Fe, I'm going to have to double that. So I'm just going to multiply it by 2 right there in my calculator. And I get 3.8. So I'm going to get my whole side length of 3.8, which is Fe. To get my perimeter, I'm going to just multiply that number by 8. So my side length times 8, that's going to give me 30.6 for my perimeter. And then the area, all I have to do is take the perimeter times my apothem, divide it by 2. So I'm going to do that right now. 30.6 times my apothem, which is 4.6. Hit that, and then divide by 2. And we're going to come up with 70.4, and that's going to be in square centimeters. So that one was one of the problems where we would suggest, like, hey, this is the most work you're ever going to have to do, since I have to do trig um, Sokotoa functions twice. Number two and three are a throwback to a real quick thing that we discussed in class, which was the area of a triangle given SAS. And that's our formula right there, one-half BC sine of A. So it's uh, two sides with an included angle. And we just kind of throw it in the formula. So... That's what I'm going to do, 1 half BC times sine of A. So that's going to be 1 half of 8 times 3 times the sine of 50. And we just kind of plug it in, and that's all we do. 8 times 3 times sine 50, divide it by 2, and we get um, our area is equal to 9.2. Uh, it says hundredth. Um, I rounded it to the tenths. My bad. I will listen better next time. But we get 9.2 square centimeters. Uh, again, just doing the same thing. 1 half B times C times the uh, sine of A. That's going to be 1 half of 9 times 20 times the sine of 65. And so then we're going to do the 9 times 20 first times sine 65, like that, and divide by 2. And I'm going to get area equals 80. 1.57, and that's going to be in square feet. And that time I actually listened to what I was supposed to do. 
All right, moving on. Now we get into our area of regular polygons. Again, uh, given what we have, we're going to have to search for certain things. So uh, I don't think there's a ton of problems on here. Um, so it's pretty short, but these problems are a little long. All right, first thing I like to do is just like to write out my formula. It's one half apothem times perimeter. Now I know that my apothem is actually given to me right here. It's uh, this little height. So I'm going to actually do one half times 14 times perimeter. So I really, what I'm looking for is my perimeter. So I'm going to draw my little triangle out. I have to find my central angle. Well, that's going to be pretty easy. It's going to be 360 divided by 5, uh, which is 72 degrees. So that means in one of these little pieces of pie, I get 72. But I'm going to cut that in half to get myself 36 degrees on the inside. I know my apothem already is 14. And the only other really thing I care about is my half side. So I'm going to search for that. So I have to set up uh, one equation to solve for that. And we're going to use um, my eyes right here. That's going to be opposite over adjacent. So that's going to be the tan of 36 equals opposite x over 14, which is my adjacent. And we're going to get 14 times tan 36. And I just plug that in my calculator. And that gives me 10.17. Now remember, that's only my half side, so I have to double that to get my full side length of about 20.3. And then to get the perimeter, we'll put that down right here. To get the perimeter, I'm going to take that 20.3 and multiply it by my five sides. I'm just leaving my calculator, so it's going to be a little bit more exact. I'm going to get 101.71. And then it says, um, find the area. Well, now I know my perimeter. I just have to multiply this number right here times 14, which is my apothem, and then divide it by 2, which is going to give me 712. Um, nearest hundredth is going to be 001. And that's in square inches. Okay, so not too bad. Next one, number five, we have a shape. I gotta double check how many sides this is. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sides, so it's nine sided. So central angle is gonna be 360 divided by nine, which I don't know that one off the top of my head, that's 40. Uh, the apothem I don't know, but the perimeter should be pretty easy to find. Um, so I'm gonna have to search for my apothem, but the perimeter should just be 14 times nine because I have nine sides. So I just do that in my calculator, 14 times nine, that's gonna give me 126. So that's pretty easy. I just have to find the apothem. So I'm gonna draw my little um, triangle here. Remember this is half the side, so I'm gonna just write seven. I don't know the apothem, and we're gonna write half the central angle in here, which is gonna be 20. So that's the full central angle is 40. And then again, we're gonna use my trig I have opposite over adjacent, so it's going to be tangent of 20 equals opposite over adjacent. We're going to switch those. So we're going to get 7 over tan 20. I'm going to get 19.23 for my apothem. And uh, all I have to do is multiply that by my perimeter and then divide it by 2, and I get my area of 1,211.64, and that's going to be in square centimeters. All right, and yeah, we'll flip it over. So these last two were given radius, so they're just going to be a little bit more time uh, intensive, uh, but the, the good part is we can kind of cheat a little bit because we've already dealt with the uh, pentagon already. We know the central angle is 72 from before. It's going to have 36 degrees in here. We're going to have a 20. We're just going to have to use trig twice to go ahead and solve for my apothem and my half side. So I'm going to speed things up just a little bit. Uh, so my first one, I'm going to solve for the apothem in purple. So I'm going to do uh, hypotenuse and adjacent, so that's going to be cosine of 36 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to get 20 times the cosine of 36. 
which is going to give me 16.1618. And then one side, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that in, let's go pink. And so this time I'm going to be looking for opposite and hypotenuse. That's going to be sine of 36 equals opposite over that. So you get 20 times sine 36. Now that is not my side length, that's only half my side length, so I do have to double that. So I get 23.5 for my side length. And then there's five sides, so I'm going to multiply that by 5 to get 117.55. And then I just have to do a perimeter, sorry, one half apothem, which is going to give me 23.51 times my perimeter of 117.55. I already have this one in my calculator here, so I'm just going to multiply it times the apothem of 23.51 and then divide that by 2. And let's see, we can see that and get 1381.88. And that's going to be in square millimeters. So an octagon with radius 9, I'm just going to go straight to the triangle. We've actually already done an octagon. We know the central angle is 45. Uh, that makes the half angle 22.5. The radius is 9. And so we're going to do the same thing. We have to find multiple of these. So I'm going to find the apothem first. I'll do it in brown. So it's going to be uh, adjacent and hypotenuse. It's going to be cosine 22.5 equals uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, it's going to be 9 times cosine of 22.5. And that gives me 8.3. 1. Uh, and then we're going to do the same thing. I'll go purple, this time for the side. And we're going to get sine, because it's opposite and hypotenuse, of 22.5 equals x over 9. 9 times sine 22.5 is 3.44. Now remember, 3.44 is not the whole side. That's only half of it, so i got to double it. So I get 6.88. Then i got to multiply it by 8 sides, which is going to give me 55.11. Uh, and then we're going to do apothem times perimeter. So that's area equals 1 half apothem. 8.31 times perimeter, 55.11. I already have my perimeter in here. That should be, yeah, 55.11, that's fine. Uh, times my apothem, and divided by 2. We should get 228.97, and that is in squared centimeters. All right, our last two are just factoring, so group by factoring. And then move these over, and this would just be basic x factoring. So I'll leave you to those. Ciao.